Because I didn't see it when my yeah, ex had it until that. like a year in, and I was just like, um, what's going on? Yeah. You, he snapped into a whole different type of person and that I did not understand. And I was like, I can't I can't do this for my own personal. So we went to um, we went to like some convenience store in L.A. And I remember everything was so cool before then we had moved in together. Everything was lit. And the guy, the gas attendant was like the store's closed. And I remember him like mushing a guy in the face. And I was like, I had never seen anything like that before. Like, I'm a very calm person. I'd be chilling. And I'm like, he just told you that the store was closed and that you couldn't get nothing. And his anger was like, it, it was like a snap situation. And since then it was like, the play fighting seemed to be a little bit too serious. He didn't <laughs> stop when he was supposed to stop. I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I, you're enjoying this. And this is not, this is, I'm not digging it. It's not okay with me. Like, so I just felt like, nah, like you really had some deep issues. And my mom always told me, she was like, you got to watch how a man treat his, his, um, his mama. mom and see that's how he will treat you. And he used to bark on his mom and scream at her and everything. And then he started doing that shit to me. And I was just like, I can't do this. I can't save you. I'm not you here for that. Yeah, I'm here to love you, and that's all I could do. But my job here is done. I think, Wait, hold on. Can I just, <laughs> what, Rico? <laughs> I got to regroup. Hold on. Because I'll be snapping sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> I felt like, me personally, I've dated women who needed... Um, see, like, when we say mental health issues, I want to make sure that... that the audience and everybody viewing is not thinking it's something extreme because some people think that mental health issues could be like schizophrenia, but it could just literally just be trauma. It Question. could just be some type of small trauma or big trauma, either or. You know, there could be like for me, I consider this a mental health mental health issue is I have super trust issues. I don't trust a single soul. I don't trust a single person. I don't trust a single woman. I just have trust issues, right? And that's something that's deeply rooted that I personally believe is something I have to live with, right? Everybody that I had growing up left me when they weren't supposed to leave me. So I had to fend for myself and find for myself and work for myself. So as much as I love you and I want you to be here, in the back of my mind, I know that people have the ability to bounce on me. So mm -hmm. I kind of have a little bit of a guard up. Yeah. Now. I tell you how to deal with that as somebody who might consider that a mental health issue. Listen, when you go out, you can go out, do your thing. But when you get home, let me know that you're home. I have very small requirements to make sure that that part of me does not trigger. Right now, I've dealt with women who had mental health issues as well, too, where, you know, I could not touch them a certain way because they had been touched that way in an un or a traumatic moment. You know what I'm saying? So. It's something that I personally believe that, believe it or not, most of us have some type of mental issue. I believe that. Right? Now, the degree on the mental issue is, that depends on your own mm -hmm. threshold. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody could deal with somebody who snaps, like, has a super rage effect, and somebody who, there's some people that who can't. Now, I don't think that they need, sometimes you don't necessarily need specialist help as Danny said sometimes all you need is somebody comforting you know like I've had relationships that were more comforting than the other because whatever I personally have like the trust issues and the, like a uh, major hype said it could be an abandonment issue right they never made me even feel that way so I never even that that side of me never even came about you know and some relationships it did so it's all about what you can and can't deal with and what's your threshold, similar to what you were just saying. Yeah, but I feel like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm super open because I tell like, oh, listen, I mean, I, 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 don't trust none of, I don't trust none of y'all. But Rico, I feel like mental health issue is a real problem. People don't want to face it. But Danny, you got mental health issues too. <laughs> Two weeks ago, you told me you would lie to a man even though he caught you cheating. That yeah. is a mental health issue. I don't really have an opinion on this, but what I will say is that I think to guide the conversation, we need to use the right words and we need to really be aware of what is what. So what I think Rico was talking about is more so trauma. It's on the trauma end of, of, of a spectrum. We, we know this thing isn't linear. And then I think you have people who have identified and um, been diagnosed by a professional, by a mental health professional, by a MD, by a PhD or whatever, of actually having a mental health illness. 
And so I think the way we need to think about it is on this spectrum. So what Rico is dealing with, someone may say, well, oh, if he just seeks out therapy or if he seeks out someone to talk to, that's something that he may be able to work through. And if you go down the spectrum, what Danny is talking about, that's something that someone actually needs medication to deal with their issues. That's mm -hmm. someone who actually has an illness. That's someone who may require hospitalization. And so I think we have to look at it on the spectrum versus just saying, oh, they crazy, I can't fuck with it. Because that ain't what it is. Mm -hmm. Like I, I deal with anxiety. Sometimes I can go do my breathing exercises and I'm good. But sometimes I might yeah. need a pill or two yeah. to, to, to bring myself down and be mm -hmm. able to breathe and actually sit in a room with people. So I think we need to just make sure we're using the right words and that we're not judging people and that we're not attaching negative connotations to what these issues and traumas and illnesses are. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we all kind of going through some mental health. I think everybody something. did with their own form of depression yes. in their own way. And I've dealt with that before too. It wasn't necessarily diagnosed but... by a doctor or something, but I damn sure knew what that shit felt like. I knew that that was depression. I knew that I was not okay. And I was just like, nah, my mental is not right. And I'm gonna keep it real with you. Based on, you know, the pandemic right now, most of the people that you're meeting on dates, they're dealing with some type of stress, depression, and they're all under the same umbrella of yep. some type dealing with mental issues. So right now, where we are standing, you might meet a guy that look good and his finance is good and everything is good. But because of the pandemic, he might have a bank account that's depleting and he's dealing with it, but he's not showing it. So to say, I'm, I'm not going to meet somebody that mental issue, you don't know. People wear masks that. nowadays. Very People well, masks. too. People Very wear masks well. nowadays. I just had a friend that blew up on me recently online, and this is a close friend. And I didn't know that they were even going that far. So people are dealing with a lot of stress. So we don't know who we are. And I think that as a person, you know, and this is speaking from my own personal experience, it's so essential to reflect on yourself. I don't really necessarily agree you need somebody of some type of expertise to try to tell you what's wrong with you. I was able to figure out what was wrong with me within my own self as mm -hmm. long as I took enough time to figure myself out. And I feel like a lot of people don't. So now- A lot of people I, can't. A lot of people can't because it, you know, it gets, I agree with you, a lot of people can't. Um, and for some time I couldn't, but I feel like speaking of somebody who couldn't, it's because I didn't want to. Totally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Once I decided like, yo, I can't keep on having these same obstacles come into my life. I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. So then that's when I went back to the drawing board, did some self-reflections and figured out what was in me that was creating the same outcome. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I was mm -hmm. a common denominator. Now, when you figure yourself out, I think it's so essential to when you when you're dealing with somebody new to tell them, like, yo, this is how I work. You know, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about the direct approach. And I told everybody on the panel, I'm a direct approach guy because I don't deal with conflict well, because the way I handle it is not going to be a good way mm -hmm. for no one. You know what I'm saying? IED, intermittent explosive, explosive disorder, disorder. Yeah. right? I show a lot of signs of IED. Mm -hmm. I get, if I get to that point, there's no calming me down. It's just going, whatever catastrophic happens is going to happen. That's an so, Kirby's thing. Yeah, so like, you know, so for me, and, and I do snap with certain things. That's why I give people warnings like, yo, all right. You know, like in, in, in school, I used to, my, my mom used to tell me like, yo, listen, if you feel yourself getting that mad, give everybody else a warning to stop doing whatever they're going to do. And if they continue to do it, I already know what's going to happen. There's no curing it. You know what I'm saying? So. Are you able to walk away from the situation? It Not depends really. on, no, it depends on what it is. Like now I'm an adult. So now it's like, all right, I, well, let me actually rephrase that. It's not that I'm an adult. Now I got a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. When I had nothing to lose, there was no Easier. walking away because I didn't care. Yeah. When I had a little bit to lose, there was no walking away. I didn't care. Now I got so much to lose, I actually have to take myself back to like, yo, is it worth, worth this, it. that, the... And some bug in my ear say, fuck all that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, but I have to really, really... It's, and it's hard. But what I'm trying to say is you have to self-reflect. And whenever you're going to deal with somebody, you got to be, I'm open book. This is what I do. If you do this, this is how I'm going to react. If you do that, that's how I'm going to react. Don't do any of it and we'd be good. If you do it and you and you think it's going to be funny, you try to play it, I don't know where it's going to end up to, but this is what's going to end up at. I don't I mean, ask a question real quick. I feel like there's nothing, hold on. Let I want to ask a question go, real quick. You want to ask? Yeah, let me ask. 
do you guys, because I look for red flags. I look for signs in people. That part. If you're introverted, if you're too, you know, because I'm, my personality is bubbly and, and outgoing. So when I meet people, I look, if I meet a man and he said, I don't really do family, I don't hang out, I'm introverted. That, those are signs for me. Mm -hmm. So do you guys look for red flags? When you well, I think I'm lying to you, but I think I'm dealing with that right now. Somebody that have anger issues. And I'm like, I don't know how to deal with that because I never deal with no man that scream at me. I'm usually get there <laughs> as a princess. I'm really a real princess, so people don't scream at me. And even when I deal with dudes, I deal with dudes, like people think I'm crazy and everything. But when I deal with dudes, I deal with dudes that bring a calm side of me. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that. this dude, he, he actually brings the crazy out of me when yeah, I scream. Girl. When I deal with do is all love. I want to like make you feel good as a man. Like, you know, I want to make you feel love. Like, you don't ever got to scream. I dealt with dudes that he, they don't even believe I'm the person I am on social media because that's how calm I am. So for me to deal with a dude like him, it's kind of scary to me. I'm like, damn, is he going to hit me or kill me or whatever? So oh. does that mean you're not paying attention to the red flags that's that a red flag. just pointed totally. out? I, 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 I kind of feel like, okay, uh, he got mental issue i know i can fix him because at first i was like okay this is the first time you do it probably not gonna do it again now when he third strikes so it's like uh -huh. he's like when i let him uh, do Goodbye, it. sir yes you know what i'm saying can i say one more thing about that i just think that is it's important for people to present who they are they don't do that I do that because at this point, do I don't I don't want to be a year and a half in with somebody and they be like, oh, you switch shit up and da da da. No, my guy, I gave you this person. I showed you who I was like, and I know people evolve and change, but it's very like I make things very, very clear when I'm going through some mental something that has nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. but it's my own personal thing. I'm going to make you very aware of that and communicate that. And I feel like that's a piece that people don't do either, like especially men, because men feel so like, nah, I can't even I'm supposed to be the man. I got to hold this down. I can't showcase this to 